teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School. This presentation is about cell growth and mitosis, which is cell division. And let's start off with talking about why we would need cell growth, all right? So um, the first reason is growth of the organism. So you think about um, we need lots and lots of cells in our body, all right? We can't have just one big, huge cell. We need lots of cells doing their jobs. Um, cells are more efficient when they're smaller. So our bodies and other organisms, they're made up of lots of little bitty tiny cells. And so in order to grow, those organisms need cells um, to continually do cell division, make new cells. Another reason is repair and replacement. All right, so if you get a cut, your body has to repair that, and it does that by doing cell division. It, it makes new cells to repair that, and it's basically the same as replacement because um, when you get a cut, if there's a cell that has been cut in half and it's not you know, gonna work anymore, then this it doesn't really repair the cell, it just replaces it. And so our bodies repair um, cuts and injuries by replacing those cells. And then reproductive cells. So in order for reproduction to occur, we need cell division to make those reproductive cells. All right, so let's look at chromosomes. Um, chromosomes, uh, they're where the genetic information is stored in the cell. So just, um, just to kind of give you a, a mental image of this, it's, it's easier if you have a good understanding of where all of these things are. And we, we talk about these things, but we talk about them usually separate. And so sometimes it's hard to get an idea in your head of where these things actually are. So the cell's an easy one. We've been talking about that a lot. And you know the nucleus is an organelle in the cell and it's the largest one. And inside the nucleus are the chromosomes. Different organisms have different numbers of chromosomes, but humans, each cell has 46 chromosomes. All right, so on this chromosome right here, there are genes or DNA. So a gene is a segment of DNA that codes for particular traits. Okay, so on the chromosomes, there can be hundreds of different genes. And then the gene is made up of the DNA. So you see this is a long fragment of DNA and it um, has these base pairs, A, G, C, T, which we're gonna talk about in quite a bit of detail and what that means. But for now, just know that the chromosome is DNA strands that are tightly wound. They're tightly compacted into this chromosome. All right, so the first kind of cell division we're gonna talk about is prokaryote. Now remember, prokaryote means bacteria. And bacteria, they're fairly simple organisms, so their cell division is fairly simple. In a prokaryotic cell, remember it just has that single loop of DNA. So in, in this, um, this is called binary fission, and what happens is the DNA is copied, the cell begins to divide, the cell completely divides, and there's two identical copies of the cell created. So a rather simple process. Now let's talk about the eukaryote cell cycle. So the eukaryote cell cycle um, and cell division, it's more complicated because eukaryote cells, they have more organelles that have to be copied, and they also have more DNA that has to be copied. So instead of a single loop of DNA, we have those chromosomes that have lots of different genes on them, and that all has to be copied correctly in the cell cycle. So let's go through the cell cycle. We're gonna start here with this G1, and this represents the first growth phase, all right? Now, in this part of the cell cycle, the cell is growing, it is doing normal metabolism, it's reaching the correct size, and then once it gets through this growth phase, there's a checkpoint, and the cell checks, and it says, 
Is everything okay? Did we grow right? And if everything's okay, it'll move on into this S phase, which is the synthesis phase. And this is where the DNA is copied. So replication means copied, all right? So then it will go through a second growth phase. So this is the G2. This is the growth phase and it's getting ready for mitosis. It's just making sure that the cell is just the right size. And after this phase, there's another checkpoint and it's gonna make sure that the DNA was copied okay, that the cell has grown and is ready for cell division. Then it's going to enter what's called the mitotic phase. That's the M phase here. And that's mitosis. And it has four stages, so it has um, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And that is the actual cell division process. And at the end of this process, there's another checkpoint. So all throughout this cell cycle, the cell is making sure that everything is occurring normally and that the cell is working correctly and so that it can do its proper function when it's finished dividing. All right, so let's look at mitosis in more detail. So this diagram shows G2. It starts with G2 because this is the phase that is right before we actually go into mitosis. So you can see here that we have the nucleus. These are all the chromosomes. That's the, it's called chromatin at this point. It's duplicated, but see how it's in here and it's just all kind of mixed up and um, doesn't really have a lot of order to it. Well, we're going to move into mitosis and you're going to see some, um, some dramatic changes here. The first phase of mitosis is prophase. So looking at prophase, you'll notice that the chromosomes look a little bit different, okay? They have, there's two sister chromatids here, all right? So each one of these is considered a sister chromatid. Um, they're connected in the center by a central mirror. It's not as easy to see, but you can see it once you look for it. Um, another thing that's happening in prophase is the nucleus is disintegrating. Okay, so you're not going to be seeing this well-defined nucleus anymore. And there's also a spindle developing over here. This is the part that's actually going to pull the chromosomes to the side, and it's just now developing in prophase. All right, then we move on to prometaphase, and this is um, really just part of metaphase where you can still see some fragments of the nuclear envelope, but you start to see this kinetochore, this connection on the chromosomes is a little more well-defined. The next phase is metaphase. So in metaphase, these sister chromatids, they line up on this imaginary plate in the center. That's called a metaphase plate but it's really just, um, it's an imaginary line. Sometimes it's called the um, equator of the cell, but it's a center line that the um, sister chromatids line up on. And you'll also see that there's these spindle fibers. And these spindle fibers, they're connected to the centrosome. So right there in the center, they're connected to that and they're connected to this spindle pole out here on the edge of the cell. All right, then we move into anaphase. And during anaphase, these sister chromatids, they break apart and these spindle fibers are pulling them. So during anaphase, we see that these spindle fibers get pulled to the poles. And so they've, they've broken apart and you have the sister chromatids broken apart and each half goes to one side of the pole. And then the next phase is uh, telophase and in this part you actually will start to see the cell dividing the um, chromosomes have moved to either pole and you see the cell start to divide and then the cytokinesis this is the actual cell division so cytokinesis is after telophase it's not considered a part of mitosis really but it is the final step where the cell has actually divided